Hello there. Yes, it's Black Bright, and yes, we are going through a series of different kinds of impacts. Um, it's impacting every single person differently. And um, no two people are experiencing the same thing at the same time. So this is a time when our mental well-being is being tested. So I decided to do this video because I thought it was important to talk to you about some of the, um, well, I don't know if it's some of the ways you can cope, but I guess that is what I'm trying to do. Um, this is a time when you have to hone in on those family members that you trust, people who you've been sceptical about, that you're not quite sure of, that you need to reach out to them and ask, for, you know, just talk. It's really important to talk because you're, we're in a unique situation where everybody is in the same boat in one way or another. They might not have be experiencing exactly the same experience that you are experiencing, but everybody is going to be impacted differently during this time. So um, this is a time to share concerns with friends and members of your family that you trust. This is, a, like I've said, it's a unique situation. And no need to feel embarrassed. If you want to talk to a neighbour or if you want to talk to, you know, one of your friends or a family member, everybody is going through this crisis. Everybody. In one way or another. So it's not as if you have to kind of keep up an appearance. Everybody needs support. And sometimes just talking about your concerns can help. And you can also, by talking to someone, help them, to, you know, help them allay their fears and help them to talk about their concerns, especially with men. Men don't like to talk to men. And I think it's very important now that men support men. Seriously, because they will have a similar struggle. They will be thinking the same way. They will be feeling particularly vulnerable, particularly isolated. So it's important to talk to your male friends, especially the men. And women talk to your female friends. Because everyone is experiencing this dilemma that's affecting their whole life and their future. Um, healthy, enduring relationships that you've developed over the years will be useful at this time. Now is the time to reach out to those people you care about and who care about you. It's natural to feel anxious and stressed during times of uncertainty, especially when the, the um, crisis minimum income is only £180. That's £760. That is the amount of some people's rent. That is the amount of some people's mortgage. And once they've paid that, how do they pay their other bills? Maybe if they pay that, you know, if you if they get that from um, Department of Work and Pensions, actually, they their council tax is waived. I'm not sure how the utilities work. Um, whether they waive utilities, I'm not quite sure how that works. But a lot of things will be waived. TV license is waived. And um, yeah, there is quite a few things that they waive if you have registered with the Department of Work and Pensions. So that's 760. Um, if you work, if you live in London, it's not going to go anywhere. But if you live outside London and the same uh, the same amount applies, blanket across the board, for some people, it could be very, very helpful. Um, yes, so you've got no money and you are feeling like crap. What do you do? Well, the first thing you, what you don't do is feel like a victim. What you don't do is feel sorry for yourself. What you do is look for alternatives. Look at this situation to be imaginative. 
and think, you know, this is how everybody is feeling. I would like this. How can I give what I need to someone else? Because if you can think in this particular scenario, how you're feeling, what your needs are, is there a way that you could offer those needs to someone else? It'd have to be in an online way because you can't meet up with somebody, but there might be something. You have to get your creative genes flowing and kind of think, what can I do that's going to make some money? What do people need at this time? And think about what you need and see how, you know, how you can, I don't know, I don't know, because I'm just talking out loud and I didn't really give this much thought before I did the video. I'm just thinking now about what could people need that you can supply. I think most people at this time probably need entertainment. They need, um, I don't know, they just need to feel better, I would imagine. So is there any way that you can make people feel better with what you know? What skills do you have? Maybe, you know, you've got comedians out there or I don't know. Sometimes you see these YouTube videos and they get they kick off for stupidness. Well, I call it stupidness. I shouldn't really call it stupidness because they kick off and these people are millionaires. There's one woman. She whispers. She whispers throughout the duration of her video. She has millions of viewers. Millions. People want light-hearted relief. It's fine updating ourselves about the coronavirus. And I know we need to know what's going on. But at the same token, you need light relief. So is there something you could do in that area? I'm just thinking out loud that you could provide for somebody or something that you might need. How would you like to feel? What would it take for you to feel that way? And see if you can offer that to someone else. Just a thought. Um, yeah, um, what else did I say? How can you exploit the situation by offering services that will facilitate others in a fair, legal and beneficial way? Yeah, you know, just, just think about it, because otherwise you're going to go crazy. If you can't think of something that can take you out of this downward spiral for many of you, you're going to go crazy. So you have to think about what can I do to make myself feel better and make other people feel better, whether it's just in your family, whatever it is. Whether even within your family, you entertain each other, you play games and you go on stupid, and, you know. This is a time when, you know, families will really need to pull together. Um, so um, you need a lot of self-love during now. I mean, you'll, you'll probably be find all the reasons to criticise yourself. Oh, why did I buy that car? Why did I spend my money on that? Why did I do this? Why did we go on that holiday? You'll think about all the different things and you'll be chastising yourself of all the things that you did that you wish now you hadn't have done. But we don't even know if we're going to survive this bloody coronavirus, do we? Supposing we all drop dead tomorrow. Supposing they spray some pesticides in the air and everybody drops dead. At least you had your holiday. At least you had your car. At least you had, you enjoyed yourself for that little while. So don't kick, don't beat yourself up for what you cannot change. Just think from, from today how you're going to make things different. And if we survive it, if we survive this crisis, then you can start planning your life differently. Um, make a list of 10 things you're grateful for. For me, I woke up this morning and I can think of 10 things. I woke up, you know, I, um, I've got a roof over my head. I can just about, you know, I can um, pay most of my bills. I have 
um, I have a car to go down to, I have a phone I can contact, I have a family that's not too far away who I can um, FaceTime or whatever it is, I have food in my cupboard, I have water to drink, I have, I'm, I'm healthy and um, 10, um, I love doing these videos. So that's my 10 things I'm grateful for. So kind of think about 10 things you're grateful for. Okay, create a vision board of dreams, they say. You know, that is just kind of thinking yourself ahead that takes you away from all this chaos and makes you feel a bit positive about the future. Nobody can foresee the future. We do not know what the future is. And regardless of all these horror stories, conspiracy theories, whether they're true or not, there's nothing we can do about it. If they decide to throw a bomb on us or whatever they decide to do, if they decide to kill us off, there's nothing we can do about it. But if you survive it, what would you like your future life to look like? I hope that doesn't sound too depressing. It's not meant to. It's just kind of, you know, it's about acceptance and then planning. Because if you think about these things, then you can plan for the future. I mean, we all know that we're in a um, sticky situation. And where it's unprecedented. We've never been in a situation like this. It's not like we've all been through the war. I mean, people who were um, in the World War II and are still alive, they've said they've never seen anything like this, but they wouldn't have done because they didn't have the internet. They didn't have credit cards. They didn't have all this um, electronic and um, uh, social media. They didn't have all of that. They just had a basic lifestyle. So yes, while they were deprived and they had rations, they had the family and each other that kept them together. This is the time that if you have, you and your family must keep together, keep strong. You know what is good to watch? Gogglebox. You might not think it, you might think it's a load of rubbish, but... The couples and families on Gogglebox have maintained those relationships for years, at least as long as I've been watching Gogglebox. And I often watch them and I think to myself, when they're um, communicating, the amount of um, things each other tolerate without taking it on that maybe other individuals will make a big deal out of. So it might be good to watch it just so you can get an idea about how to keep the family together and how not to take things personally, how not to become too defensive, how not to always argue your point, letting your ego get in the way. It's about relaxing a bit, not taking everything too seriously. And that's what you're going to need at this time, not to take everything too seriously. It's hard. But all you have is each other. So you're going to have to try very, very hard to be to t not take everything personally. And if so, if you know your spouse shouts at you or she's irritable or if he's irritable and he shouts at you and he doesn't take out, he doesn't do a job you've asked him to do or she doesn't do something that you're expecting her to do. Give each other some slack. OK. Take a long, relaxing bath. That's what I'm going to do in a minute. Um, and like I said in a previous video, take an interest in yourself. Get up in the morning, pretend you're going to work, make yourself look good. Put on some cologne, put on some deodorant, make yourself smell nice, make yourself attractive for your partner. Create loving um, affirmations. You know, I'm going to be strong through this. I'm going to survive this. I am going to get through this. I am, I am positive about this. You know, positive affirmations every day, every evening before you go to sleep. Think about what you can say that will make you feel better in the morning. And say it about 10 times before you go to bed. 
slow your thoughts down and live in the present. You know, your mind will be racing now because you're going to be kind of thinking, trying to manage all the things you should have managed six months ago and didn't. You put it on hold because you thought you had more time. And now you realise you haven't got any time and you have nothing in place. So those thoughts are going to be racing through your head. Try to slow them down. You don't want to have no stroke. You don't want to have no heart attack. You just, there's nothing you can do about it. So just try to slow your thoughts down. Um, listen to some of those YouTube videos, guided meditation. Or if you don't want to listen to that, if that's not your thing, listen to some more soothing music. Nothing too heavy, nothing like um, loud and boisterous, but just some, you know, some mellow music that you might like, whether it's jazz whether it's lover's rock, whether it's blues, whatever it is, whether it's, um, Ale what's his name, Alexander O'Neill or, where's this, Aaron, 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 I forgot his last name now, oh, but he's got a beautiful voice, beautiful voice, nice and mellow, you know, and just do things like that, Will Young, even him, you know, he has some nice, smooth music, or country and western, although country and western can be depressing at times. So yeah, just look for the music that suits you, that will relax you. Um, with the close down of churches, it's important that you remain spiritually aligned, continue to read your Bible in your home, um, and you know, there's a lot of prayers going around, but just do what's good for you. If it's um, just having some time to yourself, just um, speaking to the creator, whatever it is, just get yourself spiritually aligned and balanced. Now is a time you're not going to have other people to um, build up that support, but you could actually. You know, with Skype, I think they've got something um, where you can, uh, yeah, where more than one of you can actually build up a group and you can actually have your services on Skype. So you don't have to feel deprived. If you, you know, I know it's sometimes it's for the elderly that um, that go to church and they're going to be stuck at home, but that is an option, you know, that you can kind of all um, sign on, get somebody to show you how to do it sign on to Skype and you can have your church via Skype so you don't have to feel as though you're missing out. That's just an option. Um, what else is there? Tune into your higher self. That's just like praying and understanding your feelings, understanding your emotions. What am I going through? What am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I beating myself up like this? Why do I feel so helpless? Why do I feel, you know, as though nothing is going right? Just kind of get to grips with the way you're feeling and try to change those thoughts and get some control back in your life. Um, use your inventive side, like I said, to help other people. And um, yeah, access to public spaces is limited. So instead of panicking, you just need to support each other. Um, do some learning, like I've said before, you know, there's lots of free courses. Um, so you can find something. I was having a look to see what I would like to do. And although there is um, nothing about immigration, I was hoping that there was a course on immigration, but there isn't. But I was thinking I might do something on psychology or criminology or something like that. But, you know, free courses, and there's lots of them. So have a look. I'm gonna, I'm, I put the link on the other previous video, and I'm going to put it again in this one. So you can actually have a look to see what you can do. I mean, that would be an excellent way to use your time. And um, if you're over 65, and if you're over 65, just make sure you look after yourself, please. Because if you get sick, you're not going to fare well in the system as it is. Because what they're saying is there's no beds, they haven't got enough facilities, they haven't got enough ventilators, they haven't got much of anything to deal with the pandemic that is coming. They're expecting a lot of people to die. And so if you're over 65, they're not going to try and revive you. So try. Well, I shouldn't really say they're not going to try and revive you, but you're going to have to try and heal yourself. 
because they don't have the facilities. So if you are in that situation, you have to make sure that you build up your immune system. Out of all of this, it's important to keep yourself healthy so you can come out on the other side. There will always be those who will survive and those who will die. It's the law of nature. Like in war, some will die, some survive. Read Psalm 91, where it says, um, 10,000 fall on the right side and all of those that fall on the left, but none of them touch me. So read Psalm 91 and um, the prayer of protection and just look after yourself. I had a cake and two chocolates to then. I'm like, oh, why did you do that? But sometimes you feel like you need something, some kind of emotional uplift. It's so heavy, you know, you hear about it left, right and centre, and sometimes you just need something. So I should have rationed it, really. I should have had one chocolate today, but it was a lint chocolate. You know those lint chocolate, they're so creamy. And I, it was a lint chocolate, and I just couldn't have one. I had to have two. And, you know, the staff had put it out for us, bless their little hearts, because we're going in and, you know, a lot of the vibes, it's a bit heavy. So we had a chocolate, I had cakes. But I put the cake back, but I did have two chocolates. Anyway, that's all for now. Take care of yourself and try to keep your spirits up and look after yourself. Bye-bye.